One, two, three. Welcome to TK's Two Cents. Today we're going to talk about staying in character and focusing on what matters. Let's dive right in. Tweet number one today comes from my brother, BJ Thompson. Check him out on Twitter. The man tweets fire on the regular. Let's take a look at this first tweet. Never let anyone get you out of character. When I was in college, I was in this play, and my director was a real stickler about staying in character. Once you put on those costumes, he did not want you interacting with anyone from the audience as the person that you normally are. He didn't want you breaking the fourth wall. He didn't want you disrupting the illusion that this world within the story is a real world. And one day, I had to use the bathroom in the middle of a play, and we didn't have our own bathroom. And for the most part, this was something we were able to pull off without any difficulty. But this time, I ran into a friend, and he sees me, and he starts joking around with me like he usually does. And I stayed in character, and I looked at him, and I said in character, I'm sorry, young man. I do not understand you. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, okay, I see you, TK. I see you standing character, boy. And then he starts messing around with me, saying if he can get me to you know, drop the ball. And once he saw that I wasn't playing, that I wasn't going to break character for him, he was like, all right, man, I respect you, brother. I respect that. And he left me alone. I think that's a real good metaphor for life. I don't know if Shakespeare was right when he said all the world is a stage, but I do know that for every goal, there is a corresponding role that we have to play. What I mean by that is in order to create a result that matters to us, there are certain beliefs and behaviors that we must adopt. And those beliefs and behaviors constitute a role that we play. It constitutes the character that we have to embody in order to manifest what it is we are going after in life. And some people can look at us and they can say, oh man, you, you need to lighten up. Oh man, you need, you're being too serious. Or, oh man, you need to actually do it this way. Or you need to stop focusing on that. And what's going on is this person has different goals than you. This person has a different agenda. They have a different mission than you. So of course, whatever you are being is too serious or too loosey goosey for them because who you have to be in this world is different from who other people need to be. So you got to learn how to stay in character. There are many people in this world who will try to get you to break character because the way you need to be might make them uncomfortable. But you are not here in this world for the purpose of making everyone feel cozy and comfortable with who you are. You are here to be true to the person that God created you to be. And that means you cannot afford to neutralize the truth of your personality. You cannot afford to neutralize your conviction for the sake of someone else who needs to see you behave in the way that they previously defined you or in a way that is familiar to them. Never let anyone get you out of character. Let me give you one more example of this. There are a lot of videos that you can find on YouTube of athletes losing their cool when reporters ask them terrible questions. There's no shortage of such videos. Here's the funny thing about all those videos. Whenever some reporter puts a question out there and everyone agrees that the question was terrible and some athlete loses their cool, guess what? No one ever remembers the name of the reporter. No one ever prints the reporter's name in the newspaper or puts them on the front page. They always talk about the athlete's reaction. And that's the big deal. On the shows the next morning, the newspaper the next morning, everybody is analyzing the athlete that lost their cool when answering this terrible question. What's the lesson there? The lesson is when people are successful at getting you out of character, no one's going to care about the person that got you out of character. They're just going to care about how terrible you looked when you allowed them to do that to you. So it's very important that you go into every interaction with people understanding what is your mission, understanding what does self-authenticity mean to you. And then once you've got those things locked down, stay grounded in your principles, stay anchored in your self-authenticity, remain steadfast in your faith, and never let another person throw you off course from the person that you know that you need to be 
in order to fulfill the destiny that matters to you. Let's go to tweet number two. There's a difference between I'm not interested and you're not interesting. There's a difference between I don't need what you're offering and what you're offering is worthless. Another person's tastes do not equal the absolute truth about who you are. Dear family, dear friends, dear everyone who's listening, please stop letting other people's personal preferences define the totality of who you are. One of the interesting things about the language we use when we talk about our personal experiences is we often speak in these objective universal terms as if we are talking about reality itself. So someone listens to a song that they don't like and they say, that music is terrible. And, and, and they use language as if they're stating a fact about the universe. That music is terrible. That's just the way it is. But the reality is this person just isn't enjoying the song. There are lots of people out there who enjoy music that this person is calling terrible. In fact, that song probably would have never been produced if there wasn't a market of people who absolutely loved it. For everything that someone hates about you, there is someone else that's going to love you for that very thing. For everything that someone criticizes you for, there's someone else that's going to celebrate you for that very thing. Now, that doesn't mean that you just do whatever because there's someone out there that's going to celebrate you. But what it means is that since everything you do will be criticized and celebrated, you might as well make your choices from the basis of something that is more stable than either of those things. Make your choices on the basis of what are you curious about? What are you interested in? What do you feel called to do? What can you do from a place of genuine conviction? There's a guy by the name of Robert Anton Wilson who, who talks about this concept of E prime. And E prime is basically when you use the English language in a way that doesn't involve any forms of to be. So you can't use words like are or words like is because words like that are declarations about reality. So let me give you an example to make this less abstract. In normal speak, people say things like, that music is terrible. But if you're speaking in E prime, you can't use the word is. So you have to express yourself another way. So you might say something like, I don't enjoy that music, okay? Or you say, oh my gosh, this meal is horrible. Well, in E prime, you have to say, I do not like this meal. That guy isn't funny at all. In E prime, you have to say, he did not make me laugh. Now, what's the value of that? Well, speaking in E prime is a useful reminder of the fact that most of the statements and judgments we make say more about ourselves than they do about the actual thing we're talking about. You know, it's like if someone gives you a set of directions. If a person gives you a set of directions for how to get to a place, they're not only saying something about the place, but they're saying something about where they are located. If I say go five miles and turn left, well, I'm presupposing a certain starting point. So I'm not just talking about the destination, I'm talking about where I am. And that's what people do when they talk about things. They say, that's stupid, that's not funny, that's boring, that's uninteresting. And E prime is a way for talking about things that helps put you back at the center of the conversation. And it eliminates the illusion that when we are talking about our own taste, we're talking about the real world in some objective, factual way. Now, you probably won't succeed if you try to get everyone to speak this way. You've got to deal with the world as it is. One of the ways you can use this E prime concept, however, is when people talk as they normally talk, you can do the translation for them. So when people tell you, ha, you have no talent. You can translate for them and hear that as my talent isn't relative to them. When people say, oh, you're just terribly boring, you can do the translation for them and say what I am talking about or the way that I talk about it isn't interesting to them. And that's OK, because none of us are here to be all things to all people. We are simply here to be our true selves and to let the people that gravitate to that and are impacted by that gravitate to it and be impact, impacted by it. And one of the beautiful things about having a world filled with lots of different personality types 
is none of us have the pressure of being everything to everyone. It's hard enough to just be yourself. All right, everybody, those are my two cents today on staying in character and focusing on what matters. I hope this was useful to you. Feel free to leave comments or questions in the comment section. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe and share with a family or friend or anyone else that you think might benefit from these riffs. Take care, everybody. Have an awesome rest of the week.